So, um, the King Baudouin Foundation is the hub coordinator for Belgium and uh, Luxembourg. And we are an independent and pr pl pluralistic foundation. And if you look at the right corner of the slide, you see that our mission is to change society for the better and uh, to do this together. And this is our mission since decades, together, multi-stakeholder engagement, dialogue, um, uh, societal issue, grand challenges. This is in our roots, um, I can say. But I'm really convinced that this RI Tools project will help us to be more coherent in our way to embed really um, the, the, the base is the values of responsible research and innovation in our organization. We really need to think we are funding research, for example, medical research. How can we really empower patients to participate, to uh, make a reflection on the research ag agenda, on our funding, on our selection, and so on. So there is still a lot to do. And I think the um, uh, RI tools will help us to assess our organization and the way we are working. So um, we organized three different workshops, uh, three different cultures in Luxembourg and, and, and in Belgium. And uh, the message we have got there is really that we have to adapt the way we speak about responsible research and innovation to our public. Some are really discussing about responsible, not responsible, responsible for what, and so on. And some are, are really willing to have some framework, to, uh, to have some help, some instruments to uh, in, embed really RRI in their funding schemes or other uh, activities. RRI is a change of uh, mentality, a change of culture, and um, we, we can say that, as the concept is not known as such in Belgium, but there are a lot of um, promising practices, uh, and we see, for example, that funding agencies, I think a lot are doing, are um, focusing on open access, on, um, for example, also they, they ask researchers to have user groups and so on, research integrity. I think this is coming up, but it's still considered as a constraint rather than something that fosters excellence in, in research. And um, that's something that we want to do um, in our organization is really to make the link to excellent research and to uh, with between excellent research and responsible research and innovation. One of the difficulties of RI is the collaboration between stakeholders. And that's why we decided to focus our presentation on one promising practice which is a social innovation factory. And they call themselves a network organization. Uh, and uh, I will leave the floor to Kat Peters, who is the director of this uh, promising practice. Hello, everyone. I'm Kat from the Social Innovation Factory. Like uh, Benedict said, we are an. Uh, is this working? Uh, we are a network organization to uh, support and stimulate social innovation and social entrepreneurship. And for us, we see social innovation. Um, yes, thank you. That will go easier. Uh, social innovation for us, it can be a lot of things. It's actually uh, an innovative solution to an important societal challenge, and it can result in a product, a service, a, service, a model, or a method. Um, it's very broad. Social innovation is used to tackle societal challenges such as climate change, uh, poverty, even loneliness. Loneliness is really a societal challenge that um, is underestimated, I think. Uh, it's very important that people work on that. this. Uh, the aspect of aging is also a topic that's, uh, that social innovation wants to work on. And, um, how do we do that? Like Benedict said, we are uh, very much um, busy with uh, engaging stakeholders. We ourselves, we are a small team. Uh, we are not researchers, we are brokers. We want to be brokers in skills and knowledge. We want to connect people. Uh, it doesn't matter what the background is of the people. It can be researchers, it can be people working for government, it can be people, it can be a CEO of a corporate, it can be someone from civil society or just or someone who is unemployed, but as long as they are working on a concept that will bring improvement on a societal problem, they are welcome in the social innovation factory. Uh, so we are open for everyone, but they should have a concept in mind with which they will improve society. 
Um, so open for everyone, what do we do? Uh, we organize information sessions um, and then we invite them on intake meetings. In those intake meetings, it are one-to-one -one meetings where we will detect the needs. What does this person, this corporate, this uh, uh, NGO uh, need to uh, strengthen the social innovation that they are working on? Uh, maybe, not maybe, a lot of them need uh, expertise in business modeling. We see so many passionate people with great ideas, but they don't uh, have a good uh, knowledge of business modeling. So we go to look at who has expertise in business modeling, to who can we connect you. Uh, impact assessment is an issue that's also uh, a real need for a lot of people who are working on social innovations. Target group analysis, uh, it can be so broad and uh, we are just so sure that uh, an organization having all that expertise doesn't exist. You can't have expertise on everything. You can't know everything about knowledge, about, uh, about uh, poverty, about climate change, and having expertise on business modeling and uh, target group analysis and so on. But what we want to do is we want to know where all those people are who have those expertise. So we start connecting. We first detect the needs, we, we tag it. Um, and meanwhile, when we have the intake, we are very well listening to the person in front of us and detecting their skills. Uh, after each intake, we will uh, give them a report and we will tell them, okay, we detected these needs for you, but meanwhile, we, we noticed that you have a lot of expertise and you are, for example, um, you have a juridical background and um, you know a lot about um, how to beat loneliness, for example. So we will tag that too, we keep all these things in our database and then we start connecting. We organize, um, after the intake, we organize the so-called strengthening sessions where we put people one to one together. It are always people who otherwise would never have met. We really want to, I think Peter told it from uh, Mobilis, you need to learn the language. And that's what we do. We, we, make, we give people a comfortable, um, mental comfortable space. We tell them, okay, you will sit together with someone who you otherwise would not uh, meet. But uh, we can assure you it will be uh, safe. Uh, this person will be your mentor for the moment uh, and will really help you to um, fill your need. Um, because what also makes this a, a safe uh, environment is of they come in our net network, the learning network, with their needs. They come there to be helped. But afterwards, they know they will become a mentor themselves. They get one year to bring in their own expertise later on. Um, an important aspect to um, manage this learning network and to really ensure that people will share their knowledge and expertise too is the alternative currency. Yes, we developed an, a new kind of coin. We call it our uh, knowledge sharing coin. Uh, it's even tax-based and so on. I <laughs> will not tell the whole story. But uh, we have our own coin that we use for this learning network to ensure that people uh, who come in the learning network, they get expertise and knowledge that they need for, uh, to start with their social innovation, and they will bring in their own expertise later on. And people, they really feel empowered when you tell them, okay, you're here in front with your needs, but you also have to tell a lot of things. And it makes it possible to engage really everyone. We see people, we really see CEOs of big corporates, but we also see, I, last week I met a woman, she's still living in poverty, but she found a great solution to come out of this you, poverty. You have one minute left. Okay, thank you. <laughs> And she wants to, to, yeah, to create this uh, solution. And she, she said, oh no, I will not be able to, to be a mentor in your network. I don't have anything to, to tell. But uh, the, the next day already, we found someone who really needed her experience to improve his uh, social innovation. Um, so yeah, this is, you can't see it very well, but I just wanted to explain about the, the alternative currency that we use for the learning network. People come with a concept to us, they come on intake, and then they come in the learning network with their need. So they will first have a debate with the coin, um, they will have a debt, and then they get one year to, to bring their saldo to zero. 
and it works. We, we started with it um, 18 months ago. Where it was our own innovation, but we see that it's, it works. We can really involve all kinds of people connecting with each other and just to improve uh, the social innovations, so to improve society. I will stop it here. <laughs>